Okay, so good morning to all of you. Uh, uh, thank you, Kamal, for inviting me here. Always a pleasure uh, on this forum discussing about some practical things. And uh, let me begin. So, the patient profile already, uh, Dr. Kamal has already uh, edited to 56 year old, diabetic, hypertensive, 60 kg weight, so a slim guy. Presents with anterior wall STEMI with a pulse of 100 beats per minute, uh, BP 140 by 80 kilo class 2, and has had episodes, two episodes of bleeding in past two two years back in stool, and that was supposedly due to piles, but hemoglobin has always been normal. So those episodes were also presumably not very significant. EGFR is 60 ml per minute per uh, 1.73 uh, square meter. So that's a bit low for uh, him at 56, what I would expect, but he's a diabetic and coronary angiogram reveals triple vessel uh, with occluded airway and possible PCI lesions in certain RCA also. So PCI POBA to LED planned and done, uh, planned an ideal P2 Y12 inhibitor would be. So that is the uh, problem in front of us. So. What are the possible scenarios here? One can presume that there was no bleeding, no ischemic complications, the PCA went like a dream. We just uh, did the angioplasty, opened the LED, and there was a good flow, and then we uh, shifted him to the ICU. And there was nothing else. He, he, he went off uh, on an uh, expected course. And then there could be two possible scenarios. He chooses either bypass surgery, uh, or he chooses angioplasty. If he chooses bypass surgery, we will need to withhold antiplatelets for three to five days, especially one of them. What could be other scenario? Stormy course post angioplasty, he had no reflow during angioplasty or slow flow, he had ischemic complications, he had arrhythmia or hypotension or he had persistent ST changes or he had recurrent ST changes in the post-op course, post-PCI course. And then you might have to choose or give him GP2B3 inhibitors or do go for repeat, uh, repeat PCI, stand the LED. I don't know why we chose uh, uh, POBA because uh, we wanted to give him a chance for CABG. So then you may have to stand LED or you may have to do urgent PCI to LCX or RCA. This could be the scenario or you may have to go for urgent bypass surgery. And then there is no time to withhold antiquities. So. Here are the consequences of your antiplatelet regimen comes into play. Until then, everything is hunky dory. Third scenario is there is a major bleeding complication. And then, if there is a major bleeding complication, you, he may need multiple transfusions. You may have to stop antiplatelet therapy. There is a possibility of ischemic complications once you stop antiplatelet therapy. And then, what do you do? Then you go for urgent revascularization, be it bypass, be it PCI, everything will be fraught with a lot of apprehension and complications. You would do urgent revascularization or you would delay it until his bleeding complications have been addressed. So these are the possible scenarios. The third scenario is the worst and least likely in a 56 year old who has had minor episodes of bleeding due to files. But still, you have to be prepared for that. The third uh, scenario is most complicated, but probably needs least amount of thinking because no matter what antiplatelet you have chosen, you have to stop there. All right, so <clears throat> what we are talking about, we are talking about the need to identify an ideal antiplatelet which is effective in this scenario, that is in STAMI which has a lot of data in STEMI and which is safe, which would not make the patient bleed. It will not allow for ischemic complications. It will not allow the patient to bleed. It will have data in this kind of scenario in STEMI. So effective means low or no stent thrombosis early or late because it's ST elevation MI. We are worried about stent thrombosis because there is a size of thrombus which is given we are worried about thrombosis and we should have data of this antiplatelet's effectiveness or efficacy in STEMI, ST elevation MI. And it should have efficacy whether you stage 
PCI or CABG later on. You should have possibility of both poss uh, options. That kind of antiplatelet where there is a data. And if he goes for bypass, then it should be possible to withhold this antiplatelet for lowest period or smallest period of time. Because when you want to go for bypass, you should be able to go for bypass within like two, three days or even something like that. Here we are talking about three to five days because following ST elevation MI, nobody is going to do bypass for five days unless it is mandatory. So <clears throat> he's not a high bleeding risk patient. So as I said, the bleeding complication apprehension is much less here. Is 60 kg weight, so that is the only uh, thing. Otherwise, the bleeding piles uh, history is probably not a big thing, and comorbidities are okay. So here, here is what we have as far as pachygrelor is concerned. And then I'll quickly, you know everything about pachygrelor. So I'm not going to talk much about and extol the virtues of pachygrelor and talk about prasugrel and talk about cangrelor. What we need to understand is this is the scenario these are the possible scenarios, and then what could you choose, which would have probably benefits in all uh, scenarios. So the Tychagrelor mode of action or mechanism of action, I will just go through very quickly. Immature platelets is a concept, and is, is a, is a, there is enough data to show that immature platelets are probably the most important thing in thrombosis. And immature pet platelets are the ones which have dense granules and compared to the older pet platelets, these new, uh, newly born platelets have higher tendency to aggregate and adhere. And these are probably, especially in acute coronary syndrome situation, these are the platelets which are responsible for ischemic complications. So I'll go quickly. Immature platelets have, we have data that they have higher role to play in acute coronary syndrome. The pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of pachygrelor, which is compared to phenopyridines, which is clopidogrel and trazugrel, this is CPTP, it's a transfer protein. And that's how pachygrelor differs slightly from phenopyridines, which are also P2Y12 inhibitor. And pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of pachygrelor is such that it has a better effect on immature platelets. It binds reversibly to P2Y12 receptors. So when you stop, the reversal is faster. And it does not bind to the ADP binding sites of the platelets. So ADP is allowed to bind. So it has an additional mechanism of action also. It inhibits adenosine reuptake. Now, all these possibilities allow for decreased inflammation, quicker action, and overall availability of tachygrelor for immature platelets also. Why? Because prazugrel and clopidogrel are irreversible inhibitors. They bind platelet, bind for life. While tachygrelor can bind, but it is reversible. So when immature platelets are released, Tachyglero can redistribute, unbind itself from the mature platelets and go to immature platelets. And that's why possibly it has better effects. Of course, this has never been clinically proven, but pharmacologically, this is a proven fact. So I will go very quickly in the interest of time. There is a difference in platelet binding between thinoperidines and CPTPs, which I have already established and you understand. And if you look at <coughs> The tachygrelor, which is overall superior to parazugrel at binding to young immature platelets, and that has been proven. So, these table you know very well. I don't need to show it again and again. But if you compare it to prazugrel, you can be more confident in this scenario with tachygrelor because it has broader applicability. It is indicated for ACS. It is indicated if you choose PCI. It is okay if you choose CAPG. While prazugrel is not so okay if you choose CAP. So prazugrel is better if it is PCI setting. So that way, <clears throat> tachygrelor is superior. Tachygrelor has also showed a cardiovascular mortality benefit versus clopidogrel. 
and prazugrel has never shown that not mortality benefit so <clears throat> Ticagrelor is also approved for long-term protection against subsequent CV death, which again, so far, Prasugrel has not been granted that uh, indication. It has also shown less than thrombosis compared to clopidogrel. So that way also in ischemic complications, it is fine and it is as safe as any other antiplatelets as far as bleeding complications are concerned. Okay, I will go quickly. Now, if we talk about guidelines, I, these are this is the data which supported the statements I made. I will jo, go just very quickly to the latest trial that is ISAR React 5. And ISAR React 5 has been touted to propel Prazugrel as an antiplatelet of choice. But ISAR React 5 had a lot of limitations. And one of the limitations which I would like to highlight is that. 1.3% of the patients did not receive a ticagrelor loading dose, while 13.9% of the other group did not receive prazugrel loading dose. So, question of selecting, obviously ticagrelor has a broader applicability. The patients were there, but they were not given prazugrel loading dose because of the physician's lack of faith or physician felt that this patient was not suitable for trazugrel. I will not go into detail of that, but the fact is that it underlines Tachagrelor has broader applicability. I could go on to limitations of study conduct, but in interest of time, what I would like to say is compared to Prazugrel, Tachagrelor has broader applicability. It is as safe and as far as in this scenario, ischemic complications are concerned, it is equal and it has added advantage that the patient chooses for bypass you have enough data what about Kong kangrelor Kong kangrelor also uh, has only one advantage over uh, pacagrelor that it rapidly unbinds so you stop and within six hours one to six hours the effect is gone so if the patient needs urgent bypass then only kangrelor comes into play. Now, possibility of that happening is very, very low. So, in my opinion, Kangrelor, you have to also consider the cost and availability. So, if you look at all these things, Tychagrelor has a broader applicability, is indicated for ACS, regardless of management strategy, ESC guidelines, every guideline has class 1 recommendation for the use, it has shown CV mortality benefit, it has shown not to increase risk of fatal bleeding over clopidogrel up to 12 months. It is approved for long-term protection against subsequent CV events. And unlike uh, prazugrel, you don't have to go through the steps that whether the patient's weight is less than 60 kg or more than, uh, is, is he more than 75 years old, is he slated for PCI, etc. So if you again come back, effective data availability and safety, Ticagrelor ticks all the boxes and that's why I would say that is the only P2Y12 inhibitor which I would choose and go ahead without any worry in this case. Thank you. Uh, in this particular patient, I'll uh, uh, step by step show you how Ticagrelor and Prasugrel are almost similar. Uh, if you just consider the data, the latest data and uh, uh, the pharmaco uh, physiology, everything, prasugrel is almost as uh, effective and almost as safe as pitagrel. So, if you go I'm not going to do up all these things we all know. So, antiplatelets in ACS, there is no doubt. The uh, mechanism of action of various antiplatelets also we know. Sir has also elaborated about the irreversibility and reversibility of certain molecules. So we now come to in this particular patient who is uh, having an acute coronary syndrome, uh, is having LED uh, thrombus occlusion and is planned for percutaneous intervention. 
which is the standard care of treatment nowadays. So here the question is very crucial whether to go for uh, prasubril or ticagrelor. Tengrelor is a newer one and uh, very difficult to assess right now, but uh, prasubril and ticagrelor are already established. It is a third generation uh, agent with irreversible AD3 receptor antagonism, which is in a way a little bit helpful also as I'll show. Efficient generation of active metabolites as opposed to clopidogrel and high levels of platelet activation inhibition, which also has been shown in uh, various studies. Higher response in clopidogrel hyporesponders. So clopidogrel is almost out. I'm not going to do uh, that issue. I I'll just uh, I'll just uh, make a point here later on uh, in a dose patient already loaded with clopidogrel, and trial data are also there. If you see the comparison of uh, clopidogrel, prasugrel, and even uh, uh, ticagrelor and cangrelor, uh, loading dose and everything we all know. Contraindications many a times uh, uh, very porphyry propagated by other uh, manufacturers is uh, bleeding risk that also I am going to show is not that much uh, kind of uh, problematic. So if you see the studies, uh, it's a study design itself because whenever we look at the results we have to see the design of the study which uh, is particularly relevant in this case. Uh, if you see the Triton uh, to me 38 study which was conducted with Tafugel which included ACS 100% of patients, Ticagor 100% and Cangrelor only 44% of ACS patients. Uh, GP2B3 inhibitors were used much more commonly in uh, Prasugel group and that was probably one, one, one of the cause might have been because uh, it showed uh, little more uh, bleeding complications. Uh, the duration of medication and everything is okay. Primary efficacy endpoints were uh, similar including death, matter, infection and stroke. And if you see the comparison of Prasugra and Tricadrolar, this is a very interesting meta-analysis. There are some flaws with meta-analysis we all know, but uh, they are also very important and uh, strong tools to understand uh, differences between the molecules. If we see mortality, then mortality, this is pooled data of uh, many uh, studies. And if you see clearly the uh, Prasugrel Overall, if you see the mortality in prosecutorial group is little lower than that of the other. Then if you see the myocardial infarction incidence, then in all these studies pulled out patient of around more than 5,000. If you see the myocardial infarction in patients treated with prosecutorial also is much lesser compared to the other. If you look at the revascularization, again that also is better with the prosecutorial. Stent thrombosis, again, if you see, is better in prasugrel. This is this is very important point because Tricagrelor gained the momentum because it showed that stent thrombosis is reduced to less than 50% when you use instead of clopidogrel. So here, a molecule which is even more effective in terms of reducing this stent thrombosis than Tricagrelor. Then stroke incidence, again, if you see, people are uh, so much worried about prasugrel causing strokes. So here also, if you can see uh, in this meta-analysis, the prasugrel stroke incidence was better than that of Ticagrelor. 14 strokes out of around 5,000 patients compared to 24 in Ticagrelor group, and uh, uh, six compared to 13. And if you see the bleeding again, uh, which is very strongly uh, kind of uh, told about, is if you see in this full data of, of around 5,000 patients. Uh, 128 bleeding, signif clinically significant bleeding compared to 202 in Ticago group. So it is not like it is a bad boy. So based on this, we can definitely say that authors concluded the prasugrel is at least as effective and probably even better than Ticago law. Then this is a real world data from USA itself. So if you see real world means all patients, all that, that is what we do. So here, if you see, in the 30 and 90 day mesh comparisons, mesh, mesh, and bleeding, everywhere you can easily see prasugrel is better than Chicago. This is the real world data in the USA. It was said 
in this uh, because they were probably very astonished to see these results. So it was it was uh, like they uh, added this point that uh, probably uh, physicians appear to preferentially use prosecutorially younger patients, and that's why probably this data. But it is just a speculation. So then I come to Isar yet Sir has tried to dissect its uh, flaws, but uh, if you see, this is the Isar yet trial where more than more than 4,000 patients, prosugrel versus ticagrel, one of its kind, head to head comparison, which is rare to see, and primary endpoint was composite of uh, the three point endpoint and safety is leading. Here, if you see in the conclusion. Among the patients who presented with acute coronary syndrome, like the patient in our case, where with or without ST segment elevation, the incidence of death, MI, and stroke was significantly lower among those who treated with prasugrel compared to ticagrel. The incidence of major bleeding was not significantly different. It was similar to ticagrel. And this was a subgroup of the same study, this RX uh, subgroup, where patient underwent coronary intervention like in our patient where out of the more than 4000 patient 80 percent of the patient were eligible for uh, uh, in, uh, vascular intervention where randomly assigned to ticagrel and prasugrel and if you see 9.8 percent of patients in ticagrel group had uh, primary endpoint while in uh, prasugrel group it was around 7.2 percent so almost 25% reduction in the three point, uh, 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 three point mesh. So that is not very insignificant, I would say. Because if you see the current uh, medication, where uh, even a 16 or 18% reduction in the mesh events is considered significant. So 25% uh, reduction in mesh is something which is spectacular in my opinion. And the bleeding risk, you can see here, the, even there, even prasugrel is little better, 78 compared to 84 bleeding uh, event. So this is again one of an uh, observational study, more than 7,000 patients. And here, these kaplan meyer calls show us one year death in the groups, either STEMI or this is uh, statistically adjusted STEMI to host or NSTMI. And here the conclusion was compared to ticagrel, prasugrel was associated with superior clinical outcome in STEMI patients, which is what our patient is, but not in uh, non sts RMI. Probably again because the thrombus load is more in the STEMI patients. Again, here this is again a meta analysis kind of thing, network meta analysis, which is, which is uh, truly eye opening. I will say network meta analysis. Uh, takes into account many trials very scientifically and statistically goes into details of each and every patient and then produces the outcome which you can see this is the rank probability of which agent is superior and here you can see out of all in every respect the number one is our so called bad boy which is prasugrel first in all cause mortality first in cardiovascular death first in definite or probable stent thrombosis stroke and bleeding which are the uh, which are the main uh, objections uh, by the clinician and minor bleeding makes everything favorable to prasugrel and ticagrel comes second or third and cangrelor even though it is being injectable fast acting everything said all together it again takes second or third rank so if you see again <coughs> cardiovascular death marker infarction stroke minor everywhere the conclusion is, despite rapid platelet inhibition provided by Kangalore, strong effects of Vicadolor as touted, even with that, the first rank goes to Prasudev. And here, I would like to point out one or two important things in this patient. In this patient, patient is uh, posted for coronary intervention. And in this era, if, if this case were 10 or 15 years back, I would definitely understand that patient might have to go for bypass later on. But here it is an LED and your casting. Why do you want to just do a POBA? Just go for a stand and then after two or three days, or even in next admission, go for the second angioplasty of Arsene LCS. As simple as that. Why do you want to go for bypassing this patient? 
and in today's world most of the patient we can do coronary intervention it is not like 10 years or 15 years back where uh, we were limited in resources and uh, hardware where probably in few patient we had to go for bypass so here in the, this case there is absolutely no uh, preference of precardiogram or procedure that is what i would say thank, thank you rashid thank you sir good morning everyone uh, let us talk about uh, a very important molecule uh, which is uh, pengrelol, uh, especially in the setting which has been given to me. Uh, we all know the history of this patient. It's a bleeding pile. That is one history. Patient is having TBD, diabetes, may need a bypass surgery. Plan is deferred vascularization. That means at present we are planning only the ADD plasty and later on we are going to do a uh, plasty of stent or circumflex. Pengrelol, according to me, is a safe phase in this situation. Uh, it's the case which has given to me. Now, why we need a second interpreted agent and when should we give? We should give once we know the gonadotropin anatomy and once we decide that angioplasty, is, we are going ahead with the angioplasty, that is one. And second important thing is to give a no, no stent thrombosis or a no bleeding. That is the main purpose because the patient is having acute macular infarction and the patient is having bleeding history also. So adjuvant pharmacotherapy is going to be crucial and we have to give once we decide that patient is going for angioplasty and we have to add a second interpreted agent and we have to continue it for a longer time. And as you can see here, the stent thrombosis is probably the most adverse sequelae which we really want to prevent once we, uh, under, we undertake the patient for angioplasty. And this is the reason we give a second interpreted agent which can be Cagrelor, which can be Plasogrel or in the newer time or newer era is going to be Cagrelor. I am going to justify that in present case. As you can see here, Plasogrel irreversibly bind. It's a pro-drug that is a little disadvantage. Important thing is the time of action, okay, it's a 30 minutes to 4 hours and now the patient is already on table, 100% LED occlusion, we are starting the procedure, okay, we cannot wait to have anticipated effect for a longer time, that is one. The second disadvantage is offset of action takes about 5 to 7 days and as the case has been described, the patient may need a later uh, bypass surgery or a stage plastic for what ne needs to be done, that we have to keep in mind. The limitation of oral antiplatelet uh, anti agent, we know absorption may not be predictable, patient may have nausea vomiting. Uh, delayed onset of action, as I have told, 2 to 4 hours, which is not good in this situation. It cannot provide a reliable antiplatelet effect and we really need a reversible platelet inhibition because patient has a bleeding history, at the same time patient may need a bypass surgery later on. So delayed on offset of action also is very important and congrelol is a molecule where uh, this uh, disadvantage is not there. Those patients, I presume that this patient is not pre-treated with any other antipated agent. Okay, now we are going to start antipated agent. The most important thing is if you have a delayed onset of action, as far as platelet inhibition is concerned, then definitely stain thrombosis is the major thing which can happen. What we used to do in past when the cancer was not available, we used to give GP3 inhibitor in this sort of patient. It's a very effective molecule, very useful molecule. The major disadvantage, the bleeding complications are very high. Okay, and these basically offset the advantage of using uh, the pitrobin inhibitor. Now let us understand and know about the cangrelol molecule itself. Cangrelol basically is the adenosine triphosphate analog which basically acts on the same receptor of clopidogrel, plasogrel and ticagrelol, that is one. Potent onset of action, that is very important. Second important thing is the reversible action. That means once you stop or the bleeding chances are much less with cangrelol as you can see here. Another important thing is when there is a situation like delayed absorption, okay, it, it, which is a disadvantage for oral molecule is not going to be there with this molecule. And it is an impre impressive flexibility, meaning by suppose during procedure of primary angioplasty of LED, suppose the rupture, rupture occurs or some complication occurs and patient need an emergency surgery, the offset of action is very important because it's going to go within 60 to 90 minutes. As you can see here, extensive plated inhibition within two minutes start, that is important. It is maintained throughout the infusion period and 90 minutes once you stop the molecule, the interpreted effect goes. Higher uh, dose of controller is more effective because it also acts on the pre-selecting uh, expression also. There is no need of hepatic conversion with this molecule which is required for prasogrel. Uh, and visual impairment or hepatic impairment it is not going to affect the efficacy of this molecule as far as interpreted is concerned. And practically there is no drug to drug reaction, interaction. So now let us compare all these three molecules. As you can see here, Congrelor where it stands, it is also a reversible molecule. This is also not a pro-drug, so it is going to be effective very fast. The major advantage you can see here is a two minutes the starting of action time, that is one. 
and offset of action as you can see is 60 minutes so that is also, also very important in, especially in this subscriber patient when there is a bleeding history as well as by, bypass may be required in near future so unique pharmacological property has an attractive option especially in this kind of patient now what are the data which can compare with this molecule as you can see there are the champion TCI champion platform champion phonics this all the trials have clearly shown that primary endpoint death myocardial infarction need of revascularization is significantly low if you see the p value it is 0 0.005 so it is a definite advantage that is one as you can see here the risk reduction at the end of 48 hours and 30 minutes in primary outcome stent thrombosis ischemia driven revascularization and myocardial infarction also favor the use of kangaroo in this of patient so there is an advantage as far as safety is concerned as you can see thrombus formation acute th stent thrombosis need of GP thrombosis will be quite less in this group of patient you know, if you look at overall complication rates are almost 20 percent less at the same time the bleeding complications are not increased especially the major bleeding okay the gusto major bleeding or the TME major bleeds are almost same that also we have to keep in mind someone may argue because all these studies were done with the clopidogrel okay not with the prasugrel together but this molecule has start come in market I mean in, in pictures in 2005 okay and all the studies were done in the previous time before 2015 where the prasugrel or decagrel was not commonly used but let us study as you can see here where the cross decagrel was used okay of course we don't know whether Samir Bey is going to use the cross decagrel and this but even in this subset of patients 30 minutes when you finish the procedure we know that the na nowadays farming can be finished in 30 or 40 minutes if you look at the plated inhibition which is much less if the decagrel has been given even the cross okay so as far as anti-plated efficacy is concerned, fast action can be achieved with kangalol only, that is one. What about the prasugrel? As you can see here, this is a study where three molecules were compared. It was kangalol, tyrofiban and prasugrel. And as you can see here, compared to prasugrel, the plated inhibition at the end of 30 minutes, which is the, the time where we require a maximum interpreter effects because we are going, going for the angioplasty is quite less compared to the other molecules. What about the comparison with GP inhibitor? Of course, GP inhibitor, as I have told, is a good molecule. It's a comparable efficacy of Congrelol and GP Both are IV molecule, both are antipatid agent. So as far as ischemia or a thrombosis is concerned, there is no much difference. But the major difference or major advantage of Congrelol is in the bleeding complication. As you can see, the major TME bleed or a gusto major uh, TME bleed is significantly less with this molecule, as you can see uh, in this slide. So historically, nowadays we are not using GP inhibitor much in most of the patient. Okay, mainly because we have uh, it, it's only a bailout that is what what we what we call. Then we are stuck and we have to use. That is the only thing. Bleeding is the major concern. Okay, and especially when we have a prasugrel or ticagrel, and then suppose this patient has been given and by chance no reflux occurs, and we have to give a GP inhibitor, it's going to be a significant bleeding complication, and also patient has a history of uh, bleeding pipe. At the same time, when, when, whenever there is a suspected, about, suppose the patient develops a no reflow because there is a big chunk of thrombus in the LED, then a GP inhibitor probably might be used. What are the guideline indication of Kangrelol? It is 2B indication where patients is, uh, I mean, there is, there is no uh, uh, GP, I mean, uh, antipated agent has been given and mainly to reduce the ischemic complications in this patient. Now, let us come back to the other patient, which is having a history of bleeding pipe, 100% thrombus containing lesion. There is a long segment lesion and it's a deferred vascular. That means we are going to do a stage angioplasty or a bypass surgery later on. What we have to keep in mind, patient is having diabetes and definitely is going to have a diffuse disease. There is more chance of no reflow in this patient as we expect it to be having a diffuse disease. We may not put in the primary situation and we may subject this patient for CABG later on. So that also we have to keep in mind when we are doing an angioplasty. Another important thing is delayed onset of ticagrel or prasugrel is also going to contribute for no reflow and a throm uh, uh, stent thrombosis also in this situation and we might have to use a bailout GP inhibitor. Suppose we have given this molecule in this patient then problem is the, the antipatid effect is going to last maybe for 5-7 days and by chance suppose patient requires a bypass surgery in the near time that is very stuck and suppose by chance the patient develops some sort of a complication during procedure then also ticagrel uh, I mean some patient has to go for urgent CABG that also is going to be a really a problem if the patient is on ticagrel or a prasugrel. We also we keep, have to keep in mind that patient is also having a bleeding PR. By chance if it occurs then we are practically stuck because we don't know at that situation what, what to do uh, and go ahead. This may be the similar case scenario which has been described. This is the LED lesion as you can see here and as you can see as you can see, we, we, we have done a, a plain angioplasty in this patient, and angioplasty was done. And this is many a times what, sorry, 
this is many a times what we uh, many a times encounter. So. And this is what many a times we encounter. Once we do angioplasty, we don't know it's a thrombus central lesion, diffuse already, there is no row flow, we, we, we cannot put a stent in this situation. And many a times we decide that patient should go for a CABP later on. And this is a situation where by chance if ticatural or prasadil has not been given, it may be uh, serving the purpose. This. So this may be the situation, as you can see, there is a no reflow, okay, after doing angioplasty of LED. We, we know a patient is also having a breathing complication. And if we, we have to give a GP meter in this patient because now there is a no reflow. And if we give it, then there is going to be a big problem. So among this, all the three options which has been given, thrombus containing multivessel disease, primary angioplasty, I mean, primary angioplasty which we are doing, and there is a bleeding risk also. Probably Quangrelol, if you use, that allows CABG to be performed early if it is required in a specific situation, and which is likely in this patient because patient is a diabetic and likely to have a multivessel, I mean, a long segment disease. Breeding piles also is in a contributory factor, and at the same time, if you expose them, then we have to delay the surgery for a later time. Extra advantage if the patient is having vomiting, not tolerating or delayed absorption, uh, cangrelol IV is a uh, molecule. Ticagrelol may be a choice if there is a single vessel disease and there is no diabetes, no bleeding history, definitely that should be the choice. Otherwise, cangrelol is the best choice. Thank you very much.